If you've caught a channel catfish recently, chances are very good that it came from Chesapeake Hatchery in southwest Missouri, which has been in operation since back in the days of the CCC in the 1930s. And it has turned out literally millions of channel catfish as well as other warm water species. And we're going to see just how this operation works. Keith Hendricks is the hatchery manager here at Chesapeake, which is located just about 20 miles west of Springfield. And I mentioned that channel catfish were raised here, and they are indeed, but you also raise other species, don't you, Keith? Yes, we do. We provide uh, the largemouth bass and bluegill for ponds and lakes in the, in the southwest part of the state, besides the catfish. But the channel catfish is really the interesting story, at least it is to me, and I know it will be to the public. But first of all, just very briefly, how do you go about producing the, the uh, bass and the bluegill? Uh, the channel cat, of course, as you've seen, is, is hatched artificially, where the bass and bluegill more or less take care of themselves until they become fry. They make nests out in the lakes and spawn in them, and the fry comes up, then we catch the small all fry and remove them from the adults and put them in lakes by themselves and then they're stocked out at a later date. But the channel catfish, well, it's kind of like having some chickens out with uh, a nest and you have to go out and take the eggs out of the nest, right? Yes, we do that. We, we certainly collect eggs and they're, they're taken to the building, of course, and hatch artificially. Uh, but instead of nest, here you have some artificial, well, I guess you use just regular old cream cans. Just a regular old 10-gallon cream can is an ideal subject for them to spawn in. And, of course, uh, the time of year, they just spawn once a year, right? They spawn once a year, yes. Uh, generally at this time of year, uh, during the month of June, is their prime spawning time. Of course, we're into July, but that doesn't matter. They, they, it depends a little bit on the weather, I suppose. Uh, they extend from uh, May through July generally, but uh, as I said before, June is their main month. Yes, they do. Okay, now, in deference to like our cold water hatcheries, meaning trout hatcheries, which uh, is the operation is considerably different than it was to me, and I know I've seen this operation many times, where we uh, strip the fish and so on. Here, we let old Mother Nature take its course, right? More or less, that's correct, yes. It's drastically different than the cold water eggs. Except that you do have brood stocks in the various uh, lakes and ponds that you have on the area. How many ponds do you have, by the way? We have uh, 10 ponds in the channel catfish program that, that are used for uh, spawning lakes, yes. And about how many brood fish do you have on hands? We carry uh, approximately 300 the year round. So, uh, as we will see in various situations here, you go out and you plant these uh, cream cans or milk cans out there and uh, with markers and just periodically, how often do you go about uh, checking on the eggs? These eggs are checked, uh, or these containers are checked three times a week, generally Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. This gives a period of time in between that we don't molest the cans or bother the catfish so they do have time to deposit their eggs in the cans. So it's, again, uh, the natural way because the male goes ahead and fertilizes the eggs, right? That is correct. The male comes by and cleans the can out completely, and uh, we can always generally anticipate when we're going to get a spawn in the can next day because he does clean it, and then uh, nature's provided them a way to, to round them up a female, and they go in and she deposits the eggs, and then the male fertilizes them, and then we come by and pick them up. And... Uh, about how many eggs will, uh, well, say an average female, and I guess this is kind of hard to pin down, but uh, I know that uh, you go mostly by pounds, but how many eggs will a female deposit? Average, uh, our average here is probably two and a half pounds, and we, uh, we've made a count on these several times, and we get 10,000 catfish for, per pound of eggs. 10,000 catfish per pound? 10,000 catfish per pound. That, uh, our basis of our record system is based on that, and we weigh them eventually and, and know that's true. You were telling me earlier, too, that you really get pretty good uh, 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 reproduction out of these. That is, you don't have very much loss. We have very little loss uh, of the method we use in the hatchery building. That is correct. Once the eggs reach the hatchery, then the business starts. What do you do with them then? Well, the eggs are brought into the hatchery building and immediately uh, they're deposited in a container there that has water in it and the scales and they're weighed. 
to determine the amount of eggs that we have in each spawn. They're kept individually. The fish that come from these eggs ordinarily are 10,000 per pound of eggs, so we can keep a total count on what we have. Then they're deposited up in the hatching troughs that are run by overshot water wheels, the old-fashioned water wheel, and, and then uh, made ready for medication. They've been fertilized out in the pond, and they, uh, each uh, spawn is checked under a dissecting scope to make sure that they're fertile before they're deposited in the hatching troughs. There'd be no point in even uh, the time and the effort to put them in the trough if they're not fertile. Percentage is high on the fertile fertility of the eggs. Now we've got them in the uh, area in the, the troughs, and the, uh, actually those paddles sort of simulate the tail of the uh, male fish, right? They take the uh, job away from the male fish of fanning the eggs, and the purpose of keeping them fanned like that in the paddles that you can see in there is to keep the sediment off the eggs and also to keep them in motion. It's a very necessary part of their hatching to be agitated. It takes approximately seven days in 75 to 80 degree temperature, water temperature. Temperature is very critical, right? It's very important to us. As soon as they're hatched, they're in a egg stage with uh, two little eyes, and they're left in there a couple of days to settle down and begin to absorb those egg sacs, which is their food for a few days before we start feeding them. Then they're taken and putting in the rearing troughs below. Okay, and then in about three weeks, you have babies to send. Three weeks, there are some ready to ship out to the other hatcheries and out to rearing pools. Well, Keith, you're getting rid of some of your babies, and how old are these babies? These fish, Woody, are approximately three weeks old. They were spawned about the June the 18th. And they're going where now? These fish are going to Lewis and Clark. The rearing ponds there are later to be used for farm pond stocking in the fall. And uh, by the time they're ready to be stocked this fall, how big will they be? They'll be approximately four to five inches, what we call fingerlings. And you'll be putting a lot of feed into those to make them four to five inches, not you, but the uh, people at Lewis and Clark, right? Yes, they will be, and we will, the ones that we keep here will be stocked out. It'll be the same procedure. Yeah, they'll be fed till fall and then hauled and delivered to farm ponds and lakes. And uh, approximately about how long you will it be before these babies will end up as a catfish fillet on somebody's hook? Well, we, Woody, we ask our people that we stock ponds to wait uh, two years before they start taking any fish out. So approximately three years they should wait, and then they'll, have, they'll be ready for the table. They should weigh about two pounds or thereabouts. So uh, no telling where in the state these little fellows may end up. No, these, these might wind up in any county because we distribute to the whole state from here, so they may, be, they may come up anywhere. Now, you say distribute to the whole state. Now, they may go to, like, these are going to Lewis and Clark. Some others may go to uh, other areas of, uh, like, Lake Pajo, where we have a rearing area, right? That's right, Woody. They'll be, they'll be put in the hatcheries and fed the fall, like we said a while ago, and then they'll be distributed out to ponds in their respective districts. We had seen here several of uh, these being brought out, and you're weighing them. How many, how many of these little babies uh, to a pound? These are approximately 2,700 to the pound. They're weighed on gram scales, and uh, we're particular about our weights, and we keep sizes. They're graded and all before they're shipped. So in this load, then, uh, how many will you be loading out of here like today? Steve will take 100,000 back to Lewis and Clark with him today. So you're pretty accurate on those figures, and when you say 100,000 of those, you don't actually stand there and count each one of them, but you know by the uh, weight. That's right. They're weighed by pounds after that onto the truck in the compartments. And uh, we've, we've checked and double-checked, and we're fairly close on them. We're not too far off. Well, now, about how many babies you suppose over the years, and I'm sure you've been around about 33 years, I know, and 30 years right, right in, in this business. How, in the last 30 years, about how many thousands of millions of babies have we sent out here to various parts of Missouri for the angler's pleasure? Well, our orders uh, last year and this year are probably a million and a half, so probably in the 30 years, probably 30 to 40 million, Woody, at, at least. That's a lot of catfish it's fillets, you know. It's okay. been a lot of pleasure for a lot of fishermen. Uh, I hope they think about us when they get one on the end of a pole. Well, that's the whole idea. I hope they think about us, too, because it's, it's uh, made possible, by, of course, by the 
the sportsmen and their purchase of hunting and fishing permits That's and correct. by the folks who buy anything now with the uh, with their conservation tax on uh, sales tax. That's correct, Woody. That's right. And uh, each year we're stepping up production, right? That is right. We're increasing our production each year. We hope to more yet. We're going to have to to meet our demands. There's more people, more like to fish, and we therefore we have to have more fish. More fishing poles, that's right, sticking out over the water. <laughs> that's correct. And who knows? Maybe the next time you and I go fishing, we will catch one of your own babies. Might do that. I, that'd be all right. There wouldn't be nothing wrong with that, that's for sure. But we'd like for those babies to be grown up, you know, like anywhere from two to five pounds or something like that. That'd be ideal, yes, it would. <laughs> they make good fillets at that size. Okay. Well, we'll see some... We'll hope we'll see the folks later on out on the fishing bank somewhere and say, hey, there's a catfish, and it came from Chesapeake Hatchery originally. That's right, and I'd like to see them with a smile on their face. Right. Oh, I'm sure they will be. <laughs>